Greetings, fellow Empyreans. I am Ashtarothy, the voice of New Eden, and it is May 19th, YC125, and this is the Eve Universe Show. Welcome, welcome, welcome. How's it going, guys? Settle on in. It is a good day. It is a Friday, and we have stuff to cover today. Not new stuff, training stuff. If you are watching, before we go into anything, I want to say, if you are watching this video right now, and it's not live, chances are, what we're doing, what we're going to be doing here today is basically recording a tutorial video that I will then use the footage of and audio of to edit up to make the real tutorial video. And so if you're watching this sometime, uh, you know, days in the future, uh, there is a chance that the final video is up. If it is, it'll be in the comment below. If not... Uh, you can go ahead and watch the full thing. Either way, I guess, uh, we'll be covering a lot of different stuff, but I do want to talk, uh, just say hi to everybody and let people settle in. Make sure you like the stream. I just want to say that because I always feel concerned that once I come out with like the real edited version, people still accidentally find the live version and like they could have the experience that they want with like a tightly edited video. But yeah, today we are going to go over Yeet Exploration. What's up, guys? Snoo Snoo, Sealies, Superlando, something something. All you guys, you, CSSU you Command, and Sidewinder Spiritwinder, Marcus. And of course, LM1 and Tesla. Hey, and Reese. <laughs> well, that's good. Hey, Sean. Oh, 70 you. You love the Raws? I know. That's what I'm saying. I, I know that you guys come here to see it live. I'm just wanting to say, like, you know, as I said yesterday, you know, the last couple of months has been... Uh, I'll be honest, I haven't been making as much or as good content as I'd like. I've been doing a lot of other things. Uh, there's various reasons for that. But now, I have a, a topic, I have my, my, my meds renewed, and I even found my clipboard, or my whiteboard. So we've got notes again. So buckle up, buckaroo. We have a plan. <clears throat> so today's video Eve is a bit f slow until this shadow war is wrapped up it is true and i really wish that they would increase the number of sites I'll, I'll just say this right now i want more sites in low sec the issue is i put together a battle cruiser site a fleet yesterday in order to go run the sites and there was one that we could find and it was in sudorento which i mean i'm not afraid of running a site in sudorento but I'm not going to go and take an entire battle cruiser fleet all the way out to there for one site with all the risks that it takes and all that stuff. Not when there is five event sites in every system that we were in. So we just ran event sites. Uh, no, I'm using the same streaming. I'm using OBS. But uh, so the thing is, is this. Uh, we have seen a lot of new players coming in, and if the popularity of my returning to EVE watch this first video is any indication, uh, there's a lot of people coming back to the game. But one of the things that is also true about this is that a lot of the people that are coming back to the game aren't, like, coming back to, like, fully fleshed-out characters. A lot of them don't even have the characters that they used to have. They certainly aren't, you know savants at the game or whatever so they're basically like new players but not new players and so um what i wanted to do what i i have a a, a report or sorry a post on reddit that i made years ago 
that continues to be popular, very popular, called How to Have an Adventure in EVE Online for Under, for five, under 5 Million Isk, Yeet Exploration. And uh, this has been very much a beloved video uh, thing. I even have people commenting like years after the fact saying that they found it again and it's still like useful to them. Not found it again, but found it then and it's useful to them. And so I figured that why not take this the next step and make a video explaining or demonstrating this article. So that's the goal of the day. Yeah, they might be disadvantaged uh, than new players because of remembering mechanics or setups that are no longer applicable. That's true, which is why it's good that they're watching my video for returning players because it helps them know what's going on. It doesn't capture everything, but it certainly does a lot of the big things that might get you killed. Uh, instantly got bopped by diamonds. Oof. Yeah, that will happen. Um, okay. So how are we going to do... So what, the point of this here is that this is the kind of thing that you need... I'm going to show you need nothing to start with, okay? I have a brand new character. Let me introduce you to... Yeterothi. Yeterothi was born this morning, a few hours ago. Uh, I canceled out of the tutorial. The only thing that you could say I did that was special was I used the link down below to get myself a buddy code so that way I can have 1 million SP unallocated. That's going to give me everything I need in order to uh, go out there. So we're going to build this character. We're, I, I, like I said, I canceled it out of the tutorial and it stuck me right here. The only thing besides that I've done is put Kaldari Frigate into the training queue because I am, as it turns out, completely allergic to having an empty training queue. This is, no, like, this is an alpha. I literally just made her uh, today. Like, this is a perfect total alpha. There's an alpha account right there. She has 360 or 87,000 skill points to start with. Uh... I've just made a character and canceled the tutorial. That's it. That's all I've done. And the skill and put the skill in. Okay. So what I want to do is I want to show you guys how you can uh, how you can go with basically no excuse, have a fun adventure. It costs you almost nothing. You learn a lot of basic stuff. It's not the same as just like missioning or whatever. Uh, it opens up lucrative career paths, lots of uh, different adventures and stories and whatnot. It's not always good. But it's always an adventure, and we're going to see some of that here. Um, first, though, I do want to talk a little bit about what Yeet Exploration is, okay? Uh, in order to do that, I need to explain what Yeet is. So, <laughs> for those of you who maybe memory hold most of the 2010s, which, to be frank, I don't blame you, um, the, the term Yeet means to like do something without consideration or it was just an exclamation of like positive behavior it comes from this idea of like the yolo attitude that we saw uh before you know the apocalypse happened um it, where where the idea of like you only live once so do exciting things and it's like yeet, and you go and do the the thing mindlessly and of course I'm explaining this as someone who was old enough back then to still be like kids these days. So like take it for a grain of salt. But the point is, is that the phrase yeet does live on in the form of yeet exploration. And it's because we are throwing everything to the wind. Once upon a time, in order to do high level exploration, it is recommended that you find a wormhole that leads you to Nullsec, where you can do some of the better sites, uh, safer, make a lot of money, and then make your way home. The Yeet Filaments has basically cut that uh, down. So we have these devices known as needle jack filaments. Okay, there's, there's two different kinds of needle jack filaments that we're going to be looking at. And there's uh, another couple of filaments that we might look at uh, on the other side. But we have signal filaments and we have noise filaments. Both of these filaments have the capability of teleporting you 
to a random system in null security space. But while the signal filaments, so think signal versus noise, right? Signal in a band is like the actual message. Noise is all of the, is the noise, right? The, the, the snow in the signal. So in this sense, uh, the, the signal is designed to try to lock in on where people are active in NullSec. So it's going to look for a potentially active NullSec system, someplace that's being ratted in or populated in in some way. We don't want that as explorers, right? We want to find the, the f furthest out there, most lost, least seen places in New Eden. Uh, so that way we can hack and let, be left alone and find good loot. So we're going to use a noise filament. A noise filament doesn't guarantee it's going to be quiet, but it's going to basically say that it's completely random. And null is big, so we're going to hope for the best, all right? These are relatively cheap, um, and we'll get to that when we get there. But you can also get these by doing data sites, which we will also see. So first and foremost, let's sort out what we want to do. Well, I, I would like to set up a skill plan, but the problem is, is that in order to have some of these skills, like if I wanted to, um, well, I guess I could put in hacking. Like, let's say I wanted to pick up, find a good example. Um, I don't know, whatever. Let's say I wanted to pick up Galente Fergate as part of this uh, skill plan. I don't know if I have to, but I have to buy it. And I'm also going to have to buy a fit. I'm going to have to buy ships. I'm going to have to buy needles. I don't have any money. Let's look at my wallet. I have no money. So the first thing I got to do is get that very basic amount of money that I, uh, that I need in order to get started. So how am I going to do that? Well, as I said, or, you know, what this character has completely canceled out of the tutorial. So, I mean, I got the stuff from the tutorial, but there is what's known as the air career program. Okay. The air career program and the career agents. If you open up your agency and go to agents and missions and um, go to career agents, you'll see that there are different career agents. I'm going to want to do the, uh, the exploration career agents. Uh, because, first of all, it will give me a lot of stuff that I need as it is, but also the exploration career agents are super fast if you know what you're doing. And it'll give us a good opportunity to kind of look at some of the basic um, components of this whole process. But at the same time, I'm also going to be finishing the career program. I'm going to be working on this career program. So just by completing the first uh, career agent mission, I'm already going to get 37,000 interstellar credits which is a big piece because if I, uh, this is what it, if i go to my skill queue and i go to skill plans and i try to just set up this skill the air skill plan it tells me that there's a skill missing and that skill missing is repair systems so i go to buy it and i can't it's only 50 it's 58,000 i only have 15,000 so i need to get more uh isk i need to get a little bit of isk i need to get a little bit of other stuff so we're going to head two jumps to the career agent first and foremost Yes, you can game the system. I'm not, but I don't even need to worry about that right now. I am, as I'm going to go, going to go to my general settings and move my radial menu over to my right mouse button, which I find far better to work with. So that way I can use my radial menu easier without uh, making other things happening. And just for everybody else's sake, I'm going to go to display and graphics and turn off camera shake. Because a lot of people find that camera shake to be nauseating, especially if you're watching it and not playing it. The Air Explorer expert system is super strong. That's a good point, too. We'll look into how much it takes to get that. Did you biomass my characters? No, no, no. This is just an experiment. I wanted to show people how easy this is. So I'm starting from an absolute brand new character. I used my buddy code. Or I didn't use my buddy code. I used the, uh, one of the buddy codes from uh, the link down below.
Also, as I journey, I'm going to set up some basic stuff for my for when I'm out there. I'm going to want to move these to uh, compact mode. Actually, I think you can now just go to by Omega and Plex now. Actually, <laughs> no. Um... Enable compact mode by default. Compact. Low transparency. So now I can uh, go to these menus and say enable always above full screen view. And I can pull local out. So that way I can see it even when I'm in you know, I don't have to pay attention to my other chats. I can just pay attention to local. And of course, this also... Above full screen view, crush it down. Now I can open up my map and still see all my tactical stuff. Show compact member list. There it is. Took me a second. <laughs> okay, so now I'm at the career agents. And I don't need to do all of them right now. Although I do recommend doing all the career agents for a newer player. Or even a returning player because you get all of the... Um, you get some good rewards including some very valuable um, standings from doing it. So yeah, this is going to give me some misc too. So I just undock. I accept the mission. I have to go to an anomaly. Well, anomalies are easy to go to. Yep, we're going to be doing a yeet exploration. And I open up my probe window, which this is not what I want. So we're going to pop this out using that box in a box, and then we can close this. So we can see anomal anomaly training site. We just warp to it. We're also going to want to put this so that way it stays up even over uh, full stream, stream screen views. So that way we can do that and we can do that. Thanks, Sam. So I make it to the site. There's the can. I burn to the can. I look forward to it when those agents will be voiced by AI. Yeah, I know, right? You can't see the whole window of the game. You're right. Let's do it that way. Unfortunately, it means there's going to be a part at the bottom, but hold on, actually, I think I can fix that too. Boom. That looks better. Okay. Where'd the can go? And I go to dock. And I bounce off the rock. Control space to stop the warp. Move away from the rock by double clicking in space away from the rock. Cut the afterburner. As soon as the afterburner finishes its red cycle, hit warp.
uh, you mentioned an invasion of Stain a few streams ago. Could you touch on this topic? I do want to uh, go deeper into the whole like Teshmurkon invading Stain thing, but uh, there is a very decent chance that that is what is kind of being geared up to happen. Tashmurkon has, uh, you know, they they built the gate, the low set gate to Stain. Uh, they've been building up their forces there for quite some time, and it makes sense that, like, as they move on to including the pirates in the faction stuff, that that would be one of the first points of conflict. No, I only made her Kaldari because I'm going to go to Jita. And this was for demonstration purposes. A lot of my demonstration characters are, are Kaldari for that reason, actually. Uh, complete the mission. Hmm. So now I'm going to get a, a Heron for this one. And it's just a warp to place. So and undock and warp to it. If I fly as a Nitri, can I say I'm using one of the lowest tech Triglavian ships? I, I don't know what you mean by that. The Zenitra is a modern invention of the Triglavians. I just used to Dixie, it's not that bad. Look, the point of this video is to be super generic. I probably could have. Oh, I don't know if there's going to be a T2 Zenitra. Uh, no, the Lashak specifically was an older style ship, but the Zernitra is a modern invention, um, like post-invasion. A bit of a digression. Zernitra subclade of Velis clade... Uh, re oh, no, you're right. It is reclaimed. In response to profound now time pressure of prayer of detached executive Troika for the sublimation of flows, flow, Zenitra subclade offers revised adaptation sch schema for 2187 tactical tro uh, Troika classification vessel into the clade flow without proving for advancing time dispersal of the strategic Troika by, by affirmation of imperative of convocation of trick law outside of the struggle. So, yeah, uh, they reclaimed this adaptation schema and then revised it. And now it's been released. All right, so you just come into these areas, uh, loot the cans. No, Dodixi is good. I know this because we take care of it. Well, I mean, the Trick Titan would be the world arc, right? All right, loot that stuff. Um, what's his name? Uriel um put, made a really interesting post arguing or with a good design for what how they could implement the world arc. Second room, just burn to the gate, I'm pretty sure. I think for the rest of these gates, it's just data, relic, and, and gas, right? So you just kind of burn through them, and then you're done. Yeah, the Zordash, the World Arc.
Calmel doesn't waste time ganking trade hubs? No, they just sit in Valor all day. Every day. Imagine believing that Calmel didn't waste time. Oof, this coffee chewed up my stomach all of a sudden. Gotta get those ship spinning numbers up somehow. I... I think that I like the idea of like getting rid of bridging from standard um, Titans and then giving it to a world arc like thing so that way the bridge has to commit to the field. I've discussed this in other videos. All right, so now I'm in the in a room. That's it. I just go on in or go home. And claim my extra isk from the career agents or from the career path. Where is the physical location of the world arc? Uh, I mean, it shows up in Pochfin a lot. I, I can't agree that it's a ship that you can get. Okay, now in the next mission, we're going to take a bit of an aside, and we're going to talk about the mechanics of what we're actually talking about here, okay? So I need to scan down a, a data site, so we're going to talk about scanning. First and foremost, for the basics of scanning, you should open up your agency, go to the help section, and go to scanning. There are several great videos that explain a lot of the basic mechanics of how scanning works. However, I want to go a little bit beyond the basics, and we're going to talk a bit about how scanning actually works. So that way we can understand when we see some of the results that we see in, um, when we do scanning. So I'm going to load up, here's my Heron, it's bonus for exploration. You can see it has a bonus to core scan, combat scanner, core and combat scanner probe strength, and also a bonus to the data and relic analyzers. So I am going to fit on it a probe launcher, and I'm going to put my probes in my cargo bay. To help explain how probing works, right? So again, this this assumes that you've already watched the other videos, so you know some of the basics about like quote unquote how to scan. So what we're going to do is we're going to take one probe, shift click drag, put one probe and put it into the probe launcher. We're going to turn off auto reload. So I can launch one probe, and then we can look in the probe window, okay? If I probe with this one probe, our results become kind of challenging, huh? They don't really know where they are. And you can see that they're all just kind of probability zones. All right? 
And the reason why this is, is because what's actually happening is that each probe is shooting out a beam, uh, like a, a it's, it's, it's sonar, effectively. So it sends out a ping, and it receives back pings. And from that, it determines an estimated place that it might be. So if you notice, these rings are different sizes. That's because it knows how far away these things are, approximately, but it doesn't know in what direction it is. So you see these big red spheres. In addition to that, uh, there's also jitter. There's a, there's a deviation to that. So these actually aren't exactly at the range that they say they are. But uh, in fact, if we do another scan at exactly the same place, we should find that the rings won't stay exactly the same. And we see that, right? All of the rings' positions changed. And that's because there's a deviation on it. Now, there's other ones. Like, I can tell you for a fact that this one isn't in range because I didn't hit it at all, right? So it's not within this range, even though the, the, it could be... So it's somewhere else in this sphere that, of possibility. All right? So that's one probe. If we take a second probe... And we load it. We take two probes. Again, this is just to demonstrate, so that way we can see how things actually work. We're going to, uh, what is it, hold shift? Yeah, shift. Make it so that these two probes are, in fact, in different places, okay? And then we're going to do a scan. So what we see here now is a bunch of rings. These rings are what happens when two probes are the ones that hit it, okay? Um, so now, this probe and this probe both got a thing. This probe sees that it's within this distance. This probe sees that it's within this distance. But given those two distances, there's basically a ring of possibility between the two of them where those things could in fact be. So that's why you see rings. All right? We good so far? So then we can load a third probe. Launch it. Open up the probe window. And now we see we have three different positions. And we hit Analyze. Okay, so now we've got some interesting stuff going on, okay? What we have is a bunch of echoes. So like this one is paired. These two are paired up. These two are paired up. The, you know, all of these different pairs. We still have... We still have a couple of rings. And we have a couple of the bubbles. So what's actually happening? Well, when you have three probes that all get a location, or a distance, rather, what happens is that there becomes two discrete points in space that both of those three po or those points in space would resolve to the same distances to those three probes, right? So in the same way that we got a ring of possibility, now we have these two points in space that, given these three probes, 
this one, if you can see, like each one of each one of these echoes is equidistant between each other to each of these each of my probes that did the scan. And that's because it knows the distance. It knows it's that far away, but it doesn't know if it's that far away to the right or that far away to the left in all three of these cases. So that's why we see this echo. But we also see a ring, right? This ring, what's interesting about this ring is we can see from our three probes that this area in, in the middle, right, where all of these echoes are, this area in the middle is where all three probes meet, which means this upper band of the ring here, the entire upper half of this ring, is within the range that if it was there, you wouldn't have a ring, you would have an echo. Which means we can already tell that this signature is somewhere along this bottom half of the ring. This is how we can begin to start to use the results that we have to make conclusions that the probes themselves can't figure out, right? This guy knows that only two probes are hitting it. Right? It's either, it's, it's, uh, this one and this one are both hitting this ring. But we know that if it was in the top half of this ring, that this third one up here would have also gotten a hit. And then it wouldn't be a ring. So we know it's in the bottom half of the ring. Okay? That's going to be really, really important once we start adding all of our probes. And then, of course, we can... Uh, add one more probe. And launch it. And now we have these four different positions. With some good crossover. So let's see what we get. Okay, and look, I now I'm getting full resolved signatures. And even the ones that aren't fully resolved, like this one right here, it's a single point. It's not a ring, it's not whatever. So if I have four or more probes that get a hit, then it knows at least roughly where it is. If there's three that get a hit, then, it's an, then it provides an echo. And if there's two that gets a hit, it's a ring. And if only one gets a hit, then it's a red sphere. All right? So now... Let's load the rest of our probes. And see if there's any good displays of what we're talking about in practice. Especially since my probes are all wonky places now. Okay, so a lot of these resolved, but if you see that this one is a ring, but we know that a ring can only happen where two of them are crossing, or where, where only two probes get it. And we can see that, like, there's this big convergence of probes. So we can see that this side of the ring, this little slash of the ring here, this edge of the ring, is the only possibility space that it could be in. And if it was anywhere closer, I'd get a result, even if it was, like, a distant result. So this actually tells us a good distance. Oh, well, fine. Booey. Now that got rid of it. All right, well, same with this echo, right? This echo. This echo out here is where only these three probes hit it. Whereas this lower echo, more than three probes hit it. So we know that this bottom echo is the false echo. 
and the top echo is in fact the correct one. This is why they say that the echo that's furthest from the center is the one that's correct. Just like the furthest band of the ring is the one that's correct. This is why. This is the mechanics of how probing actually works. Okay? And there you go. See? Got the hit. All right. Now then, what am I actually supposed to do? Data site. So that's a little bit about how to probe. A little bit of advanced information about how to probe. So now with the hacking mini game, I don't have, I didn't bring a data analyzer. Let's go fix that. Spread formation is good for Intel since you don't need precise locations. Yeah, exactly. If you just need to know what's out there, it's good to have like one big broad thing that gets a lots of things with lots of hits. So that way, you know, basically where they're at and then zero in on whichever one you want. Now, it's worth noting that this data analyzers and relic analyzer that we're fitting right now are, are civilian. So as soon as we're done with these career agents, we're going to have to replace them. There you go, so that way people can read chat a little bit easier. Burn over to the can. Didn't grab my afterburner. Whatever. We'll, we'll fix the fit in a bit. Yeah, the expanded launcher is a lot of CPU. Unless you... So, here is the hacking minigame. When I click on a site, it'll either be something dangerous, something friendly, a cache, or it'll give me a number, okay? If it gives me a number, like four. Four means it's, I'm four jumps away from the nearest interesting thing. That's a good thing, a cache, or the core, okay? So likewise, now I'm three. Now I'm still three, so this is the wrong direction. I'm going to go this way, two. Oh, there's a defensive node, so we're going to check over here. Four up. There's no, there's not even four nodes over here, so it can't be over in this area. It has to be over here. So we're going to break through this defensive node and then come down here, find the core, hack the core, and we're done. What's important to note is that all that matters is getting the core. Nothing else matters. So don't worry about clearing out stuff that you don't have to. Don't worry about doing anything extra. Once you've found the core, you're done. Or at least once you've killed the core, you're done. And I will put on my auto reload on now that we're done demonstrating the probing. And now I also have enough money. Let's talk about skill plan. If I go to my skills, I'm just going to go to the air career plan. And I'm just going to drag it in. I think that we can do that, right? No, I have to buy the skill. Buy and inject. And now I can just drag it in. No, can't do that. All right, fair enough. 
How do I activate it? Whatever. So I put those in, and uh, I, I we will act like a baker, but you can do it too. I have that million free SP that I got for using the buddy code. I'm going to redeem it. And that gives me the million unallocated SP. What is going on with that? So then I open this up. And I apply skill points. And I hit confirm. Boom. All those skills are done. I can go to Enforcer. and I Or not Enforcer. Explorer. Kaldari Explorer. Kaldari Treasure Hunter. Uh, let's just grab this one. Buy missing skill books. I don't have enough ISK yet. All right. That's fine. We'll just grab all these. I just need to grab light drone operations, acceleration control, so that's fine. And then let's see if there's any other skills I'm going to want just for this. So, Kaldari... Frigate, is that maxed out yet? Yep. I think that might be fine. All I really need is, let's see, scanning skills. Acquisition. Yeah. There we go. Next. Should have left them. The whole point of this is to show uh, how you can do this right away. The saving your million SP for after you've trained 5 million is what I recommend for blank clones, where you put in somebody, you build a bunch of characters, um, put in the, the Magic 15, the Magic 13, Magic. Uh oh. Whatever. The. Why am I not re remembering the num? Why am I spacing on the number? It's magic 13, right? Yeah. Uh, magic 14. Whatever. Put those skills in. Uh, let it bake for a few months. And then you have a million SP to, uh, to specialize in. Um, all right. Complete the mission. Nope. Can't complete the mission. Have to get proof of discovery relic. Don't quit the mission either. Yes, yeah, but don't, yeah, you don't redeem the million SP until you're done baking, because that way you can have 5 million SP allocated and 1 million SP unallocated. That is correct. Uh, we need a relic site. Did we get one? No. Wait. Nope. So we're going to launch all of our probes this time. And... This says that it's a relic site. So let's go ahead and go there. And now with everything we've learned, I don't actually care if I don't hit it exactly. As long as I hit it with something, if I get like an echo or something like that, I know how to use those to my advantage. So I can actually be a little bit sloppy about stuff. Now here's an interesting one. This result is outside of the range of where it would be if it was where it was. So I can tell you right now that its deviation says that it's not where it actually says it is. So I'm going to be a little bit off from that, so that way it would be where it needs to be in order to get that result. There it is. The expert system would have given you all those skills. That's true, too. Let's look at that. So, because of this, I have the reward bundle, some ISK, where's the expert system come in, though? When do I get the expert system?
Oh, you get it for the... Yeah, you get it for there. What what skills do I get? Oh, yeah. That's good. That's awesome. So we're going to do that. We're going to finish up the career agents. It's even better than I thought it was. Didn't grab an afterburner still. And while I do agree with the whole, like, redeeming the million SP and training and all that stuff, that is true, but, I mean, a lot of people, let's be frank, are going to just want to use the million SP so that way they can actually get some, you know, get going. That's what this whole training is about, is about helping people get started. Get in there and get going quick. Three, two, one, boom. Like I planned it. There sure are a lot of rocks to knock off of nowadays. Enjoying the game is more important than perfect efficiency. That's very true. It seems like this that make me realize that they cannot wait to get that vol volumetric cloud stuff working. So, in the purpose for the purposes of yeet exploration, uh, data sites and relic sites are going to kind of give us two different things. One, since we're in nullsec, the relic sites are going to be where uh, a lot of the more consistent money is, okay? So we're going to want to do find relic sites for money. Data sites are going to be less money. However, data sites also come with them filaments, which are going to help us uh, with, with getting around. I'm going to strip the fitting off my IBIS. And fit this to fit the afterburner to my active ship. Yeah, the event data sites as well. Oh, seven pockets. But this is a. Uh, this video is not designed to focus on like the sites that are available right now. This is evergreen content, you know. The whole point of making this is because for, it's been years since I put up my Yeet exploration guide. It's been over two years ago, and yet it's still I, I share it more than anything else. I'm gaslighting you? No, I'm not. I'm not I would never gaslight you. That's crazy. Oh, I forgot the passkey. I'm just doing, I'm doing the authentic career agent experience, guys, okay? Everyone forgets the gas key the first time, all right? Not just the first time. It is a tradition. Nothing unites EVE players more than forgetting the gas key.
Not to mention a lot. Oh, that's true. You do have to grab it and put it in your in from your inventory to your hold. Um, I'm going to take this opportunity to say you should like the stream and uh, also put on an ad. Like the ad. Got the gas. Let's go. And uh, once you get those, you got to redeem them, too. Don't forget that. And... Complete the mission. That's it, right? Yeah. All done. And I've got 1.26 million. We've got the reward bundles. And the expert system. So for the next 48 hours, I'm going to have some pretty decent uh, scanning and hacking uh, skills because of this. So we're going to select all. Redeem. Boom. But, uh, my ship still sucks, so I need to head to Jita. Oh my gosh, hold on. Am I gonna head to Dodixie instead after, after all? Uh, no, they're both, like, super far away. Man. Whatever. Oh no, it's only five jumps. Never mind, I'm dumb. Do I have any idea if there'll be an incursion work, re rework soonish within the next few years? I I'd like to think so, but it's 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 pretty tinfoil speculation based on stuff. Uh, the thing that comes up most in Rookie Chat is actually n new players not understanding there is a separate item hanger in every single station of the game. I do agree. Well, like, so what is my tinfoil do I have? I think that, um, if Svarog and Tash Murkon work together to try to bully Sancha, that could have an impact on how incursions happen. So do they have a rework plan that I know of? No, but the pieces are in place that if they wanted to make a modification or remove them, they could get away with it. I think that if they if anything happens, I would suspect that like whatever they have coming is going to effectively replace it. So, you know, when Tash Murkon invades Stain, you don't need an incursion anymore because the new system basically replaces that system. Well, remember, the, the Sparog is seem to be prepping for a second invasion. All 
Avatar should change its team up with the Angels, Serpentis, and Thucker while declaring independence from the Empire. Uh, well, the Amatar are going to be working strongly with, uh, I, the, the cracks are higher than that because the Amatar fall under, um, Artishaper and are pretty big fans of them. So there's a pretty good chance that like Artishaper, uh, isn't it Artishaper, Sorum and Amatar are kind of one of the factions. Well, incursions? Well, that's what I'm saying. Like, I think that if you replace incursions with anything, it would just be a, a better, uh, more stable PvE, uh, like raid PvE. Like, not try to be like, okay, this is incursions now, but like, fill the gap that incursions fits in. Artishaper's always been very religious, but Artishaper's also been very pro to the Amatar. They they even made the first Amatar uh, holder, like non Amarian holder, the Amatarian governor. Can't remember his name. Yeah. Well, Conid has become even more integrated. But the, um, I think Conid, Conid is clearly working with Lydai. And I wonder how much Conid is kind of functioning as like a backdoor liaison between some of the Kaldari groups and some of the Amarian groups that are trying to like seek work together on shady stuff. A newt missile? Well, the, the Artishippers have, have always had kind of like a bigger religious bent a lot of the time. More traditionalist. Well, in the same way, I, I hope that the Thucker get their own ship line, and by that I mean the Deathless. Okay, so now we're in Jita, and let's talk a little bit about the fit. We now have the, sh the skills that we need, especially thanks to the expert system, right? We have our expert system here, giving us all of these skills that we need. So we just need a ship. We can open up our fitting window. And go to this third box here, the checkbox that says Community Fittings. And then we can also check this box that says Current Hull. And we will see that there is a Heron. And there's the Kaldari Explorer. And there's the Air Career Kaldari Explorer, which I don't remember exactly what the difference between the two of them are. Nothing, probably. 1.7 versus 1.6? Eh, whatever. Uh, we can see that I'm missing one skill. Which is range finding two. So we can go apply skill points. Boom. I thought the expert system was going to take care of that. And then hit Fit ship. And then hit yes. Buy all. And we'll see how much it costs. Hopefully we have enough. thousand isk. So we're going to hit buy and fit. And we have bought it. 
We have fit it, and now we're in it. All right, so now let's go ahead and find a... On the market, we're going to look up noise. Oh, the exit fitting window doesn't take experts. Whatever. I don't care. We're done. Noise 5 needle jack. 200,000. How much do I have? 400,000. Yes, I can get one. So let's go ahead and buy this needle jack. And now... I have everything I need to go have some fun. Undock. For my fit, I have the probe launcher and the salvager that's going to be used to get my sights and the salvagers are just because micro warp drive to get me around and relic and data analyzer both i've got two range finding arrays and double gravity capacitor upgrades in order to help me scan down sites that may otherwise be difficult for my low skills and i have uh re restrained nanofibers in order to be able to make me more agile um this, uh, this is designed for anybody to be able to use. I don't need a weapon. I could get drones. But... I don't need them, for now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just going to warp to Jita at range. Like the star. And open up the filament. I'm then going to right click on myself. Go to pilot form fleet with so now i've got a fleet with myself and put this away somewhere i am also going to set my safety to yellow now before i leave i do want to show that there is another couple of filaments um there is a set of filaments that allow me to enter into pochfin which is a special area of space and then there is what's called the extraction filament proximity extraction filament which allows me to leave Pochfin. these two filaments would allow me to come back home without having to worry about it but a they're eight million total for the two of them and b what's the fun in that so with all that said yeet Normally, I like to bring a couple of extra noise filaments, but here we are. We are in Esoteria. There's no one in local. I open up my map. And we go to the filter here. And go to Geography and Statistics, Average Pilots in, in Space. We see it's been a pretty quiet here. So perfect. This is a good place. We're going to head deep into this pocket over here where there seems to have not been a lot of people for quite some time. And let's go ahead and get going. We have... We can actually filter out anomalies now because we don't care about anomalies. And start scanning. It is one hour and 16 minutes into the stream. We'll see how long it takes for me to figure out how to get home. Uh, so. Hey, Ben, thank you for that. Um, it freaked me out for a second. Uh, <laughs> so I am looking for relic sites for money, data sites for more filaments, and wormholes for potential way home. Those are the three things that I'm looking for. Okay? And why?
So each time I do a probe, I recenter it, and then I go one or two bumps down, all depending on how greedy I'm wanting to be. So as you can see here, this ring, here's a great ring, because that ring is mostly out of the way, but you can see that only the top little shard of the ring is eligible to actually be a ring. So if I just put this at the top here, and I bump it down, I should get it spot on. There you go. And it's a data site. Now, because we were doing it during the event, we could also get the event data sites, which would be pretty cool. Uh, which this is. This is a, an event data site, which is nice. Those are going to be worth money, too. So obviously the the sites are not going to look like this necessarily when you when you do it. I didn't make my pounce. So these site cans are going to be a lot harder, and I don't have really great hacking skills or hacking modules. So hopefully, hopefully I'll be able to do it. Now, because of this, I'm going to rely a lot on the rule of six if I can. So this one right here, this one, you see how there's one in every direction? That means that this spot that I just went to is 100% safe or is adjacent to the core. It had a one and this had a one which tells me that probably this one or this one is correct. Also, this one is also completely surrounded, so it's a rule of six, as well as this one and this one. So I'm going to do these ones. So this is two, and that's one. So that kind of suggests that it's probably this one, but we can also go to this one and see that it's also one. So let's just go ahead and look at that one. Yes, it is good. And then we can go up one, and this is what we see, or this is where we're at now, okay? So I want to go down here. There's some d rule of six up there, and then the, you, you generally try to go to the opposite side. So we're going to go, I have a 90-20. I can use one of my kernel rots to cut in half to 45, then cut into it. It takes me a couple hits. So two, two, two. So this might be a one. And if that's true, then that's a thing, but that's nothing good. So then I hit that, three, three, two, one, zero, two, one, zero, uh, one, two, three, nope, can't be that, one, two, three, two, two, dang it, three, Kernel rot it to bring it down to 30. Ugh. Oh, a spike. That's, that'll work, I guess. One. No! Hey! Can I say, still make it? 20. Oh, God. Hey! Boom! Hack successful. Ooh, that was a heck of a that was a heck of a journey, huh? The core is always eight or more nodes from the starting point. Unless you start in the middle, then it's random. I don't I never have agreed with that one. I haven't picked a side in the agency with this character. That's correct. Okay, so there's a lot of uh, rule of six nodes over here. So two, one, one. 
wrench. Always use a wrench basically as soon as you get it. There's no reason not to. One. I don't like that at all. Two, two, one. Spike. I hate using spikes randomly because of that. So if you notice how much damage that suppressor did to me. Oh yeah, I'm just dead now, right? Oh yeah, I'm just dead now. So that's the problem with having such a low skills and, and a low hacker is that there's certain things that can just get you. So a suppressor without a spike is just going to kill you. So I'm going to hold on to this spike with dear life and not be greedy. But there's a lot of rule, rule of six nodes over here. So I can look around. Oh! That's good luck. Bada bing, bada boom. 1.7 million. Now, the thing is, is that, again, if you're with a relatively low skill thing, you're going to lose a bunch. You, you might lose cans. And it, also notice that I'm spending a lot of time. I'm having to travel between these cans at the next site. We're going to look at how to do it so that we a little bit smarter. And so we don't have to travel between the cans in the same way. Because it's good that we have local, so we can see that there's nobody, like, hunting us right now. But um, it's always good to, move, to act in a way that isn't very predictable. And we're, so we're going to look at that, too. One, two. Hey, core. Manual piloting is usually pretty good, so I'm going to double click up to go around the Asbel. Boo. Oh no! Can I even live? No, I just fail. Yep. God, I hate suppressors. Hey, perfect. All right, and this site is done. So now I can continue with my probing. What does that sound? Oh, shoot, I don't even have desktop audio on. Here, let's fix that. I don't remember that. I don't know about that. That's a weird sound for me to hear. Is that just the sight?
It is the side ambience. Okay. Well, then I'm going to go away. Oh, it's another data site. Excellent. I left the site and I'm still getting it. Weird. So this time when I warp to the site, I'm going to uh, hit control B first. I'm going to warp to it at 100. So I'm going to hit warp to it at 100, and then I'm going to go pounce 1. And I'm going to watch to see this warp tunnel collapse notification. I'm looking for it to get to under 20, you know, 20,000 uh, kilometers, I think it is. So at 13 AU, 8 AU, 3 AU, but now it's going to hit, there you go, 3 million, 500,000, 100,000, 21,000, make the bookmark. So now I have this bookmark on grid with me and the four, four sites. So now, rather than having to travel between them all, I just warp to the pounce. And then I can warp to whichever can I want. If I, well, yeah, if you could, but maybe they don't want you to. I don't know. Oof. Whatever. I'll take the hits. Oh, yeah. Second spike. That's great. Hey. And now I can hit the L key and drag and pop this out and I can just warp to my pounce without having to worry about traveling in between it. It also makes it so that if I was in like a wormhole or something like that and somebody saw me, they couldn't actually predict where it was that I was going next. I'm just in a heron. I'm in the, I'm in the community fitting heron. Yeah, we are we are doing Yeet Exploration, a how-to guide. So for brand new players or players, you know, no excuse. Just go off and have an adventure for under 5 million isk. So we made this brand new character with no resources. And now I'm in Nullsec. System hack failed. Whoops, boo. Where's my directional scanner? Okay. That sucks.
Uh... No! Am I even going to be able to do this? I'm just going to... Yeah, no. Yep, and that one blows up. Um, I usually t tell new people not to go to Nullsec, but that's mostly me not wanting to teach them how to survive. That's the whole point of this adventure. It's awesome. They don't have to survive. If they die in a fire, then what did they lose? A couple of million? Who cares? They had an adventure. Not all adventures go well. But also, more importantly, here's the thing. Uh, you can also, they learn the, advent the dangers firsthand. And the thing I love about Yeet Exploration, especially with these, with this instructions, is that you do the yeet and now you're in nullsec and you know the whole idea of like how do i go make money and it's like well first you do this and then you go here and you got to find this kind of site and do this kind of thing and all this sort of stuff like all of that's very action like you have you have to be the one that's going out and making finding the thing and doing the thing there is something very visceral of activating the fil filament congratulations you're now in nullsec here's how to get out here's what you can do while you're here Right? It is very straightforward. And again, if all else fails, if everything falls apart, if everything dies in a giant ball of fire, who cares? You lost two million. And what did you get from it? You paid two million isk for an adventure. And if it works out, how much do you get? I mean, I've already gotten seven million in this one system, in these two sites so far. You see what I mean? That's why I like this this as a particular way of being like let's go do something different guys you know if you've never done exploration before if you're new to eve or if you want to do something that just gets you out there this gets you out there and then if they have something they'll start thinking about it well what if i had a cloak what if i had a legion what if i had a thing what if i did you know whatever and that's when they progress right what does the next time you go out look like and that's where things get really interesting I just, I, I, pur I purposefully failed that previous can just to show you guys it's okay to sometimes fail a can, okay? It was on purpose. Look at that! Look at that! Look at how devastating a suppression note is if you don't have any preparation. That's terrible. Oh my gosh. Uh... Boom! Still win! Screw you! Alright. I'm interested in how you get home with all the loot. Uh, yeah, I'm kind of interested too. I don't want to warp directly to the Stargate because there is somebody in the system. So I'm going to warp to the planet nearby. Oh, of course. And then he leaves. Because um, I don't want to jump. I don't want to warp directly into a warp bubble, you know? Asset safety drop off. But again, like, who cares? All that stuff, you guys are worrying too much, guys. The whole point of this is that, yeah, it could go bad, but it could be fine. Just find a wormhole and get home. That's it. Oh my god, it's going to still keep making that sound? Well, okay. Huh. Are we sure that's Eve? <laughs> All right. So in this system, I want to scan down stuff, but I need to find a, a safe place to be. So I'm just going to 
uh, warp to the star and make a bookmark and just t let put in safe. And I'm going to wait till I'm about halfway through warp. Pop it. All right, I'm going to I'm going to turn this off for you guys so that way you don't have to you don't have to bear with it, I guess. Drop my drones, head to the site. You you say that I'm I'm taking a lot of knowledge for granted. If if I'm missing something, please throw out any sort of suggestions. But we also showed off quite a bit of stuff, and I'm doing this for demonstration. We have other videos on some of the stuff of exploration. And as I said, a lot of the basics in, of exploration is in the agency help videos, which I strongly recommend. My goal is to find a wormhole home, correct. Fear is the mind killer. But that's the whole thing. That's one of the reasons why I love using this as a mechanic, okay? Or as a, as a way of teaching somebody. Because, like, you can be told about how spooky Nullsec is. But it isn't until you go out there and see it for yourself do you actually truly understand what is and isn't dangerous. And let me tell you, it's not as dangerous as a lot of people make it out to be. A lot of people come back and they're like, wow, that was way not as bad as I thought it was going to be. I barely saw anybody. Turn off. I'm not talking about the music. I'm talking about the beep, the 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 sonar sound that's happening in the background. Okay, a relic site. <laughs> Once again, I'm going to sit here and I'm going to go pounce one. Wait till it gets to like about 20,000 or so uh, kilometers. 9,000, that's good. So, as I said, relics are going to be. Well, uh, more about consistent money. I, by the way, every time you warp back and forth, this thing is going to pop up. So I just like to put it off in the corner. Be like, shh, go away. And this is a more, this is a more normal site. This is a site that you will definitely find if you go and do exploration. The relic hacking is just the exact same as the as the data, but obviously these these uh, hacks are going to be a lot easier than the one I just did, because the event site hacks are some of the hardest hacks in the whole game. So this is a green hack, as you can see. I can more or less just kind of brute force my way through it, even with my rudimentary skills. And look, I already just I just got 13 million isk in this one can, so that's pretty sweet. Now, admittedly, Sancha is one of the best places to do relic sites, so I got really lucky with my positioning. But again, that's the whole point of these yeet explorations. You know, sometimes it's good, sometimes it's bad, sometimes it's dangerous, sometimes you jump into 1DQ. Spoiler alert, uh, Noel's full of more Care Bears than uh, Isaac is.
so the nice thing about having when you do a hack you hit the thing and then if it's still alive it hits you so with my 25 virus strength as long as the thing has less than 25 cohesion when i hit it i don't take any damage at all that's an important thing to keep in mind Why always one DQ? Because, well, it's it's a combination of things. One, it's, you know, one of the most active null sec systems in the game. Uh, two, get, people trying to get into one DQ is kind of a meme. And three, you know, because it is so active, uh, a lot of, you know, noise filaments will end you up in and around goon space. So... Oh, that's going to hurt. I hope I don't need to break through that guy. You've got to be kidding me. Oh! Well. So this rule of six means that there's something right there, but I'm so... I am so screwed when it comes to actually getting it. So, that still won't work. Okay. I need more hit points. Oh my god. Yeah! <laughs> yeah! Ah. <gasps> uh... I still feel good about that one. That was tense. I I could have given up on that one. That's I could have given up on that. Should have given up on that one, arguably. Lots of rule of six on this one. Stop! Hey! Thank you. Well, on the one hand, it's a rule of six. On the other hand, it's a suppression node. So just for funsies, that's the fucking nightmare. And now I just lose. Now I just lose. Now I just lose. Knew where it was, still lose. Spike. Hey. There we go, 10 million. So if you think about it, my cargo now, I I start out with nothing, built up 1. Point, what, 3 million, 4 million, and I already have 31 million in my cargo bay. Already starting to think about figuring out how to get home, right? Huh. 
<laughs> yeah. Adrenaline rush. All right. And what's fun is, is that, like, sure, this is exciting, but then once you, uh, once you get to the higher end stuff, suddenly you're going to feel like you're cheating because you grew up, you know, doing things this way. Then you're going to suddenly be like, oh, wait, I can break everything in one less hit, which means that things just don't do damage to me anymore. Damn it. Thirty four million. Thirty four million. I've gotten five. That was five intact ar armor plates in that one can. Woo I really hope CCP puts muzzle, more puzzles in the game, reskinning the hacking, hacking minigame for other stuff. Could be add a lot of gameplay options. Well, they've been putting in some new ways of like utilizing the game hacking mini game and there are you know there are some things so okay after these three sites i have 66 million isk in my 60 so my, my ship itself is like 1 million. There's another 2.5 million. Okay. Now then, keep scanning. We got that echo, so we know that the echo's in the further position. Older project discovery mechanics could be used somehow. That'd be cool. Game is a puzzle. It's a series of problems to solve. SSCT data site. And there's no results, which means it's too high. Let's try that. There are lots of really good ways of making some good money and going on an adventure. That's for sure. I have always thought, like, when they reintroduce, when they finally let us go to Jove space, it should be like a one system at a time kind of thing. And just because we have access to one system in Jove space doesn't necessarily mean we have the ability to get to the next one.
Oh my gosh. Four million. So how to get there? Uh, ship casters, wormholes. They go to Joe's space via the Yule. Um, there's a cruiser with a, with a built-in portal device that just lets them jump to Joe's space. See, that was a mistake. Oh, no! Golly, I hate these things, man. Nope. Yay! Yeah, the Domain of Bouillon. <laughs> That's the other one to get to. I can't wait to cast myself into Intaki and start blasting with Viridian drops. Uh, I don't know about going to Intaki with that. No, boy, that's bad. Oh! 6040s are real bad. I should have I should have thought about that one. I didn't do my math. Ew. Ah! Oh. Give me a break. All right, boom. I'm going to hit commercial again. Boom. Another data site. Ah, excuse me. I want to know what the heck is going on in Yigalis. You and me both. 
That Keldari Super Troop. Also, the Turner people. Have we, have we, has anybody thought about the Turner people? For crying out loud. No! Bad. No. Bad. Oh no! It wasn't even the right one! It's right there! Oh my gosh, so much rule of six. All the rule of six. It's all fives too. Dang it. <laughs> hey. Drop the pounce. Go here. Open up the scanner. It'd be kind of cool if Ataki gains into in independence and joins the syndicate. It'd be really weird though. I, I don't know, it's going to be weird with them making that the HQ. It's going to have some pretty profound implications. I expect the players will have input. I'm sure. Poss I mean, like, not I'm sure, but probably. I mean, in essence, I think that we're having input right now, which is why everybody needs to help the Galente finish their ship caster. Oh, no, it's another data site. Unfortunately, I think we're just going to have to leave this. This is going to be my last data site for today. We're just going to pretend like there aren't a million data sites in NullSec right now. So that way I can try to get home. Otherwise, here's the fun thing. I could... Anywho, uh, let's just go ahead and waste one of these. Hey, there we go. There's another one. Let 
Another eight million? So I could just log out here. Like if I was just, if this was my actual exploration character, honestly, with this many sites, this few people and being in Sancha space, I'd probably just log out here, to be honest. Um, but for the purposes of the demonstration, we are going to try to find a wormhole home. Trails confirm Galente sympathizer. Uh, yeah. I'd say that's a pretty apt description of her. For fuck. Dog. Man, you're so funny, game. You're hilarious. You're so funny. You're so funny. You're so funny. I'm laughing. For those of you who don't know, that was a suppression node that went into a rule of six restoration node. Just let me know that I knew where the core was, but I was never going to see it. There we go. Thank you. Thank you for your mercy. And at the same time, I'm also going to go to Eve Scout. And... Grab the Thera bookmarks. And go to locations. Shared locations, Thera. Jumps. The closest one is 32 jumps for me. Excellent. Awesome. Well done. So then I'm going to go Jita. Gosh darn it. I just, I just burned away. Well, that is one of my attempts. Um, that's a whole bunch of jumps too. Yeah, that's not going to work either. All right, wormhole it is. Oh my god. Well, that one's blown up. That's fine. We're fine. Everything's fine. Let's go. It's even funnier that it was only protecting 0.5 mil of loot. Yeah, no kidding. I'm just going to try to find a wormhole home or a real data site with uh, actual filaments in it. That way I can filament to somewhere else. Like I said, or I could just log out here. This place would be a great place to stay and hack, to be honest.
I'm going to take this opportunity to say that if you learned anything here today, uh, make sure to like the, the video. If you know something that I haven't covered, make sure to add it as a comment down below. If you do like my videos, always make sure to watch them all the way through as well as like them, because that's what helps YouTube think that my content's worth watching. Nullsec Blue AO Rare Asteroids, huh? These things are cool. They have really good uh, ore in them. That's actually quite a bit of rock. Definitely more than they get in high sec. <laughs> uh, what if it had a recon bonus? None of the pirates... Just none of the pirates' is bonus is just a, is a copy of like a T two bonus. I don't I don't think that's I don't think that's clever enough. Because then your question would be, well, what would the Deathless Recon have? Really. It's a data site and there's so many data sites out here. Man, if you want to do the event, you should yeet out to null. That's the that's the moral of this story. I still think that uh the, the jamming but also not allowing it to lock you, like that is smuggling because it allows you to jam you, the guy who's scramming you. That's the whole point. Can't be warp speed, that's angels. Yes, both of the uh, the 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 covert ops hauler is immune to up. Oh, it's a relic site. It could make money. But I'm not going to right now. Let's just pretend like I made another hundred million or something like that. The boo book, boo book is immune. Yeah, I think immune to cargo scanning is easy to throw in there. I don't feel like that's, I mean, like, have that one too, sure. Uh-oh. Stabber. There's two stabbers at the gate. But now they're not. We're just going to pretend like it's fine. Is 
two stabbers left the gate without leaving the system. Which leads me to believe that they warped off the gate. So I should be fine. Did I show you guys how to get through wormholes to get back home? Well, you know, I mean... Not yet. Again, I will also edit it down to be like a tight video, too. I mean, obviously, you can go watch the VOD, too. Uh, well, I'm not going to be doing that much in wormhole space. All I'm going to be doing is trying to find a way out. I keep hitting space bar to descan here. Escape menu, shortcuts, navigation, or is it combat? Directional scan, swap it to space bar, reassign. Thank you very much. And away we go. Keep this up and I might have a, a, a second stream where I try to find my way home. <laughs> Good luck and have fun. That's cool. I'm glad that you were able to catch me live. Combat site. Don't need a combat site. Keep on going, I guess. Clean up my windows some. Yes, you can use the Pokemon filaments to get back to home relatively easily. Remember, I, but at the, I made this character literally at the beginning of this stream. So she didn't have enough money for that at the time. Yeah, there'll be a wormhole route to, to high set if you look hard enough and long enough, for sure. It's just, we're, what we're running into here is the universal rule of you always find what you're not looking for. So now that I need a wormhole, I don't find one. It's just that simple. It's just, all, explore, ex, all exploration is is a number game. But again, this is part of the adventure, right? You know, if I was if I was just some young buck trying to do stuff, I've got plenty of sights. I've got some cool uh, I had some people to dodge. 
I've got some wormholes to find. I'm not in any pressure to get home. I'm not trying to wrap up a stream as a new player. This is just an adventure for me. I can log out at any time and just log back in and keep going. No pressure whatsoever. It's, it's awesome. It's awesome. This is an awesome way to like just spend an evening, right? Throw together five million is I don't care how much you have in your bank. I don't care how experienced you are. Just see what Eve has to offer you. Grab a brand new, like a low class frigate and a filament and go see what happens. The new smuggler ships can use shipcaster beacons no matter who they belong to. Nice. I've wanted for a while, like the ability to, um, like if I gain enough standings with the, with the Garistas, I want to be able to use their, their smuggler network. So it turns out there's like a bunch of stargates or like connections that normally you can't access that might move around. And the other cool thing is, is that as doing this, you look like a brand new character. So if somebody attacks you, they feel bad about it, maybe. All the factions should get their own gamer. Well, I was just thinking like, like the Garistus and Serpentis, or Serpentis may have those sorts of things and different. I, I, I was thinking that different pirate factions could offer different rewards. Uh, for when you get to your you know, high standings with them. Well, yeah, you might be able to hack them, but you'd have to find them first. Sounds like content to me, exactly. Like, you can't probe it down, but you could probe down someone who's at one, and you can always be brought to the one by somebody who has access to it. Hey, a wormhole! I was, I was thinking about training a character to live in an Edencom system and run those combat sites. Uh, well, I mean, it's going to burn your relationship with Edencom, but that's not necessarily a terrible thing. The problem with the income sites, as with all of the invasion sites nowadays, except for like the the Dread and Potfin, is that they're so inconsistent. They're hard to like because you, you need to have a group for anything besides the emerging, more or less. So I'm going to do a pounce at the wormhole. And look at what kind of wormhole it is. Uh, dangerous unknown parts of space. Not great, but we're just we're still going to see what it is. That means it's going to be a C four C five, I think. Uh, yeah, even the high-sec ones, because they're designed to be group content, uh, especially, like, major, like, well, not the majors, but, like, it, I have a Kybernaut handbook, which is back when we used to run those sites, like, as a thing. Hit me up in Discord. Okay, let's Google this system. J215554. It has... 
the class five. And in Z kill, it has had four kills today. Well, that's not great. And there's a Fortizar. Let's get to scanning. Oh, shoot, shoot, shoot. Oh, don't do that. Always bookmark your exit. Oh, there's a Helios. There's a Helios. So now I've particularly got to keep an eye out for combat scanner probes. Because otherwise this adventure is going to have a unhappy quick ending. When there's these many sites, I just like to zoom in and like be like, all right, well, just give me whatever I get. And there's my pounce. This one goes to dangerous unknown parts of space as well. Neat. I think that's the static. Damn it, come on. I still don't like citadels and wormholes. Eh, I mean... What I found funny was when the citadels, like, got nerfed, in wormholes to be closer to bosses, people acted like that was like the end of the universe. There's the Helios. That's probably my uh, cue to leave this grid. My corp kept moving around. There's, they're around in OPSEC and 2 billion of my stuff dumped out that they donated to the corp fund. Oh, that sucks.
Oh, shoot. I don't care what number it is anymore. Dangerous unknown parts of space. Man, come on, stop. Stop it with this dangerous unknown nonsense. Ugh. If I explain properly, I don't care the structure in case leavers had kept their own bookmarks on the structures. That's fair. I mean, like, uh, when we were doing stuff in wormhole space, we were talking about doing that every once in a while where, like, you just empty out, you pick up the Fortizar or whatever to shake out the, the couch. Oh, Eve Uni, I heard you guys uh, kick some butt recently. Is that right? We were common. We were the cannon fodder for CFT to shoot at while in it. Actually, did the damage. You know, not giving yourself enough credit. I read the Reddit post. Yeah. And this wormhole leads to... Dangerous unknown parts of space. Stop. Just, just stop. Now I wish I was a gas off adventure. Ah. We're going to be doing gas huffing another day. I do want to do a gas huffing training. Welcome to C5s. I know, right? It is true. What do we got? What do we got? What do we got? What do we got? Dangerous unknown! This is nonsense. This is, this is nonsense. Utterly ludicrous. Inconceivable. Unacceptable. Very dangerous, much wormhole, wow. <sighs> Here's another wormhole. Here's another wormhole. What's this one going to be, guys? 
What's this one gonna be? Are we gonna break our record? Or are we gonna stick with it? What do you guys think? We've got five so far. One of them goes to Nullsec. The rest of them Dangerous Unknown. What's it gonna be, guys? Dangerous Unknown! Hey! It's almost like there's some C5 highway or something. Utterly ludicrous. Utterly ludicrous. C-13, sort of the smallest frigates with one-shot titans. I mean, yeah, there's that. Now it's more surprising that there's only four kills in there today. You know... That's a solid point, actually. How am I still alive? Data site, give me a break. What are we looking for? A way home. Any way out. Bob loves me and doesn't want me to leave. Self-destruct? I've got 80 million in my cargo bolt bay. I'd really prefer not to. We once moved to Death Star Post to a moon, uh, one moon over to mess with our friends who logged off his Rourke to get some sleep and came back to found himself alone in a completely empty spot. That's awesome. Just move the Rourke, like move the Post over like one foot every couple of days. I know you can't really do it that way, but that's that would be funny. Just replace it with replace a large pos with a small pos. See how long it takes for everybody to notice that they can't fit in the bubble anymore. So this wormhole appears. Barring this site, this scan being something, this this is what we in the biz would call a dead end. Well, first of all, they originally suggested the decommissioning of pauses longer than four or five years ago. But uh, as CCB Fozzie has said, the hardest part about decommissioning the pos is the actual removing of the pos. Plus, there are still some good use cases for a pos over a uh, uh, faction or uh, sorry a uh, upwell structure so i don't know it's a the problem is is that like removing something like that takes a lot of dev cycles but you can't really prove to anybody with any sort of money that those dev cycles will actually bring in people or convince anybody that anything is better so while it's kind of funny to clown on them about the fact that they've never gotten around to it at the same time it's like it's really really hard to justify removing something from the game that the act of removing it from the game may be 
controversial to a lot to at least some people. Sure, not removing it from the game makes some people grumble, but to actively do something that takes dev cycles that people will probably not be through like nobody's going to be like, oh my god, I can't it's, 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 hallelujah, but there will be people upset about it. Like that's just you can't you can't convince a software development company that's the thing to do. I jumped into a different wormhole. Screw it. Let's keep going. This one is... J210750. It is a class 5 pulsar. And hasn't seen a kill in a couple of days. Let's get going. He parted a hair away from the bubble when he was moving his other ships. Oh, ha! Ah, well. Almost don't cut it. I didn't bookmark my wormhole, but also I don't overly care about it. Although now I'm going to scan it down. Always bookmark your wormholes, guys. Hey, no security space. See, the nice thing about doing that big, broad uh, scan from the center that I do at the very beginning is that it causes a lot of echoes and it causes a lot of rings. And while I do move the probes, I know that it was roughly centered. So from that, I can make a lot of really educated guesses about where things are. Um, like, for instance, this one here is the probable one. Dangerous unknowns? I guess I was wrong about the probable one. Might be worth checking the Thera. The closest Thera bookmark was 32 jumps. It'll be worth checking it on the other side of the, um, the Nullsec one, yeah. I always set perches as a habit, so even if I forget to mark the hole, I have a perch on grid. It's a good idea.
Lat. All right, whatever. We're going to slow down. Dangerous unknown. I've been running with a hawk, been feel naked without drones. Without drones is pretty weird for me. Dangerous unknown. Oh no, and now I've got four WH4s. Hold on. Uh, edit location, WH5, whatever. Been using it for T021 abyssals and can't stop myself reacting that, that I've forgotten DPS and I can't put out drones. Yeah, but the hawk is is pretty good at the abyss. Very good at the abyss, especially darks. Angels are still super spooky. I hate the worm. I absolutely hate the worm in the abyss. I think it's I think it's a trap. People always smugly tell me that, oh yeah, I'm good at the like the worm's great. I never lose the worm. And then like two days later they come to me and he's like, Alright, you're right. I died. People think that the worm is good in the abyss, but it's really not. Hey, Ben. <laughs> I missed that. That that scans bad. Hey, oh seven. Thank you for that. Bravo to you, my friend, for making this stream possible. If you were just thinking to yourself, man, Ben's such a cool dude, but I want to be able to support, but you know, I don't, I don't have five bucks to spend. That's perfectly fine. Just keep watching the video, hit that like, and share it with a friend. You too can be cool. Just like Ben. Except for not like Ben, because he did all of that and gave me five bucks. So, you know, there's that. <laughs> Connecting. There it is.
Dangerous unknown. Dangerous unknown. Dangerous unknown. Now this happens because there is, a, you know, a lot of C5s have connections to C5s, but then there's also C5 to C5 roaming connections too, right? Which just makes it so that there's always those. Oh, yeah, okay. Good night just got into my house, asked me to join stream. Great. Good night. You don't need to break into people's houses to tell them to watch the stream. Like, I appreciate your enthusiasm, man. You're a good dude. But don't break into people's houses for me, please. Dangerous unknown. I'm just going to pop back out the null sec. See what's there. I can't find a C2 static. And given the time, I'm... Hey! I don't know what to say other than nice stream. Maybe you should do Twitch. Ha <laughs> ha! Uh... I mean, once upon a time, I did. Tenerifis. Tenerifis. Okay. Hmm. I don't know what to say other than nice stream. Maybe you should do Twitch. <laughs> Maybe I should. I'll put that on the, uh, put that on the old noggin. Can I hear he is fine? Nobody's breaking into his house. <laughs> Can I has uh, investigated his own operations and is determined that it's all perfectly fine, guys. Don't worry. Okay. Um, personal locations. 16 jumps to Thera. Kind of in the middle of nowhere, otherwise. That's a pretty, that's a pretty empty path through Detroit, to, through Detroit, through Detroit, though. So let's, Let's fucking, let's do it. Let's do it, guys. Let's do it. Not a fan of Twitch. You know, it's funny. When I switched from YouTube to Twitch, or from Twitch to YouTube, so many of my stream, of people that watched my streams, thanked me for it because they could delete the Twitch app now. Not a single person was like, man, I really wish you were still on Twitch. Is a Sino up? Ew. This is where things get really ugly real fast. 
No filaments? No, because I haven't found any like real data sites. Only the SOE epic, uh, the SSCT uh, data sites, which I found quite a few of. Oh, that's a mobile Sino beacon. All right, well, whatever. Three should always carry three pots from filaments plus one extraction. I had no money. This was a this is a brand new character. I finished the career agent and then went and yeeted. Oh boy, that's a regional gate, so there's nothing over there. All right, well, let's try to make a... Nope, I don't want to do that. You don't want to go directly from one to the other because that way you have like a straight path and that's not super awesome. So I'm going to go to this planet first. Thank you. No problem, Sean. You just, uh... The whole point is I'm showing how, how easy and fun and exciting yeet exploration is. This isn't about doing it the safest, best way. It's about having an adventure for 2 million isk. My problem is, is that now I'm in Nullsec and I can't find my way home. That is an adventure. If I had a Potchfin filament, then I would just use it and be home. That's not fun. I want fun. So I'm stuck in the middle of nowhere. Until I can figure out a way out. And that's just the way it is. Prepping is for Care Bears. So I used to... My, what I've always envisioned out of this... Uh, back in the day, I used to play Minecraft a lot. And I played uh, modded Minecraft, and I had a, a version, or I had a thing called Thomcraft, which would allow you to make all these little magical items to use. And one of them was a portable hole. And so the portable hole, you could put it on a wall, or put it on, if you put it on somewhere, it basically checked to see if it could burrow a hole, like a hole straight through to something. So like if you had a, if you had a hill, you could use it, and it would just carve a hole straight through the hill, and then you could pick it back up or whatever. Well, what I would do is I would run around point straight down, and then activate it, causing me to fall inside of a random cave. Uh, and then try to figure out my way out, right? This is literally that exact same concept, but in EVE. Here I am, stuck in the null sack with you. And or lava. Well, yeah, I mean, sometimes you fall directly into lava. That's the, that's, that's the cost of having an adventure. So far, I have some diamonds. So, I'd like to not fall in lava, but I accept the fact that that is very much possible. Portable hole. Yes. It is a D&D &D thing. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it always feels safe when there's a cargo container next to the wormhole. Excuse me. Unknown parts of space. Unknown parts of space with a cargo container outside of it. Should be fine, right? This is fine. That is super fine. Nothing to be concerned about. Continuous ads about. 
I have no idea anything about that. No, no, no. But if you want to play Raid Shadow Legend, no. What happens if you try to put a portable hole inside of a portable hole? It's a bag of holding. If you, if you to put a bag of holding inside of a portable hole, one thing happens. And if you do a... I think it's portable hole into a bag of holding is a big explosion. Uh, bag, of hol bag of holding into portable hole is a big explosion. Portable hole into bag of holding is rip into astral... is a rip and tear into the astral plane. If I remember correctly. <laughs> it's your boy, Raid Shadow Legends. I will say this, if you ever, I'm not going to say, I'm not going to say I'll never do an, a Raid Shadow Legends uh, thing. Might, someday, if I decide to check it out and it's actually worth it. But I'll tell you this right now. I'm going to tell you this right now, okay? Take note of it. Write it down. Make a note. If I ever do, if I ever do, it's Danny's fault. That's the important part. Bro, <laughs> I'm just saying, if it ever happens, it's going to be your fault. Unknown parts of space. You know, this one's unknown parts of space, but it doesn't have a can next to it. Let's go ahead and look at it. <laughs> Write that down. That's right. Ash does the ad, Danny get the money. I think we should do the other way around, right? I think Danny should do the ad and I get the money. That's actually an interesting question because I've been thinking about doing like some sponsored stuff, but like, I, I'll be, I ain't gonna lie. Okay, ready? Here's my scheme. Here's my scheme. And I want, I want you guys to see if, if I want to see if you guys are, have my back on this one. I like to eat, right? So I'm going to see whether or not HelloFresh, like how the HelloFresh thing goes. So I think, I think that'd be really good. So if anything, that's one of the ones I would look at. How did I not have pro how do you not have probes loaded? I have 16 probes. How did you how did I not have probes loaded? They're supposed to, oh wait, hold on. No, they have auto reload on still now. How what that's twice so far. I haven't even checked this wormhole. Hold on. J212319. It is a class two! Hell yeah! Maybe. Jump made reload. Doesn't that keep the reload? I don't know. Maybe. Is it a high sex static? Oh, miracles abound. Bob be praised. <laughs> you know, Danny, we could have just left it the way it was. Not Ash outing my filthy secrets. My dirty gaming secrets. Your dirty, dirty secrets. Am I in a C2? I'm currently in a C2. 
Thank you, Danny. You know, if that's what I get for being for for outing your dirty, dirty secrets, then uh, maybe I should do that more. You guys are awesome, by the way. I, I have so much fun hanging out with you dudes. I probably should have bookmarked the wormhole just so I'd have one of the signatures scanned, but I got kind of excited. I'm also just going to scan everything anyways, I suppose, so who cares. That's the null sec one. Yeah, see, I could have avoided this whole thing by, uh, if I had had my bookmark, then I wouldn't have rescanned down the wormhole I came out, I came in through. Raid is introducing all new lore. Oh no, no! <laughs> I want to remind everybody. There's nothing that I am doing today that you could not do, like, immediately. I made this character this morning using a buddy code and doing just the career agents for, uh, for exploration. And here I am. <coughs> and here I am, hopefully soon, getting my filthy riches back to high sec. High security space. So the good news is it looks like it's Galente. The bad news is uh, bets that it's solitude. Taking bets. Taking bets of whether or not, just based on my luck today. Just based on my luck today. Bets that it's solitude. And solitude. <laughs> I think that's a fitting end to this journey today. All right. Well, today we did cover all of everything that you need to know in order to go on an adventure for yourself, starting with absolutely nothing in EVE Online and coming out uh, potentially very loaded or potentially very dead. Either way, very exciting, very fun. Uh, you know, it's, it's, it's just another activity to jump into in EVE Online. Uh, I have been Ashrothy. I've been playing this game since 2010, talking about it since 2012, and I'm here to put even the context for you, my fellow Empyreans. If you like this kind of content, make sure to hit a like on the video. Subscribe if you haven't. Share it with some friends. I have other videos back, including uh, people returning to EVE Online. I've got updates on what all has changed. I've got advice on uh, how to use your overview, manage your assets, setting up your UI, uh, doing certain, like all kinds of different operations. I have a massive fitting guide where we go over every single module and consideration for fitting you could possibly need. It's a pair of videos, it's six hours long, but by the end of it, you too could be a fitting master. And we have so much more because that's what we're here for. We're here to maximize player engagement with EVE Online and to help you get into it. Thank you so much for those gifted subs, LM5, uh, LM1. And thank you all for checking this out. I do want to give an extra special thanks to my sponsors, including and especially AR, wait, hold on, Abyssus, Aikiwara Zuchan, Ar uh, Arcus Erling, 
Era Danica the Queen, Belligerent Neckbeard, Black Rose Noble, Dejant Lamont, Drake, Golden Age Stories, J. Coon, Lumi, Malik Starfire, Midnight Space Monkey, Not Just Fun, Seeds of Plenty, Sredlin with No Eyes, Siliana Valesh, Tijen Tijen, Nephilim, Grendel, Yanti Leapoof, Leapoof, uh, Zalnex, as well as my Immortal Tier play, uh, supporters, 745 MPSI, Ebo Elite, May, Mercuton, Nihilum, LM1, and Rid. Thank you guys so much. Thank you guys for watching. And until next time, I have been Astrothi, the voice of New Eden, and I'll see you in space. If you want to join those people, join my Patreon or join a membership for just a dollar. Also, merch. Didn't finish this out right, but who cares? See you guys soon. 07. City.